So this is it, probably the longest bridge in antiquity. Almost 800 meters long, seven meters wide, 60 arches. So the bridge is called Puente Romano, Roman Bridge. I'm not Roman because I grew up on the other side of the Hermann Monument, but I cross it anyway. That monument marks the point that the Romans were unable to conquer in Germania. Hermann was a Roman, but he actually grew up with the Germanic tribes and returned to the savage tribes when he was older and taught them the tactics of the Romans. They were more resilient that way. They were able to adjust. I grew up on the side of the savages, but even they are allowed to make pilgrimages today. So here I am, Romans. Nice bridge you've got there. And so, hello dear friends on our break day in Merida, the capital of Extremadura. This is how you traditionally arrive in Merida, crossing the old bridge. We cheated a bit yesterday, but we don't want it to stay that way. We explore the city extensively today, and at some point we continue walking here, or start again in Villafranca, and just walk. Just walking, that's the way of St. James. But for now, this ends for us today. In the evening, we'll take the bus back to Seville. Tomorrow, we'll visit the city there, and the next day, I'll go to Granada. But today, we're here for now. So let's get going. So, sightseeing in Merida. There is an all-in-one entrance ticket for all the excavation sites at the time of our visit, which is worth the price if you are already there and can visit everything. So we go for it. First, we visit the Casa del Mitreo near the Bullring. There was a Mitra temple nearby and the property is quite opulent. There are vivid mosaics and even farmsteads with space for lots of supplies. I'd put up with this if I'm honest. When I walk through such places, I can imagine things very quickly because I remember the sandal films from the 60s. I have an idea of what it looked like here, but by no means what it was like here, what daily life felt like. It's always exciting to imagine it anew.
And here we now have the amphitheatre, and it is in the immediate vicinity of the Teatro Romano, so there is just under 10 metres between them, I would say. Well, a little more. So let's remind everyone of this. In one theatre, teatro, whatever, in Roman times people are killed, in the other theatre across the way, diagonally opposite, people perform and sing something, certainly well, and also that probably was very epic. How else? But so close together, is that what you want as a Roman? Probably. I don't know. I wasn't there. But when you go to see a play, you've paid a lot of money and you've been looking forward to it for weeks and then it comes... The climax of the play, it's just reached and you don't know whether the hero will survive or not. And then suddenly there's a terrible blood-curdling scream from next door and a roaring cheer from the arena next door. That's... that's the first spoiler in the history of the world? Or am I wrong? What do you think? Thank you, Merida. I need a coffee now. But first, I'm going to have my photo taken with the drama queen. I'm one myself today. Sorry. We continue through the city. With our all-in-one ticket, we have all access everywhere, including the Temple of Diana, which is now surrounded by narrow shopping arcades. Originally, this temple and its surrounding grounds must have been very impressive. For all those who are now rummaging through their school knowledge, Diana was the Roman goddess of the hunt, and also had a penchant for midwifery and liked the moon. Today, we would say, a modern woman. A brutal career, elbow out and give it to him or her, but also have children and raise them, and let's drink chamomile tea in the moonlight. How romantic. Can you hear the wolves howling? Let's go hunting. They do it too. So why shouldn't we also identify ourselves as predators tonight? We have the right to do so. I can imagine a life as one of so many gods being really stressful, especially when you're responsible for so many different things. Better to have just one god who is responsible for everything. As a human being, you always know who's the one to blame. We go back to the longest bridge in antiquity, the Roman Bridge. And there it is, the Citadel of Merida. In this very extensive complex is the cistern, which can be visited through an extremely solidly built corridor. Well, my friends, the short journey on the Via de la Plata ends today. We have covered about 200 kilometers. The whole trail is 1,000 kilometers long and deserves the label Insider Tip. For today, I lay down my walking stick and hand it over to an unknown finder who may continue on from here. It is a symbolic act. For me, the journey is over. You good wood from the Pyrenees now serve another master or just as a throwing stick for a walking greyhound. It was all so much better than expected that I'm moving on with incredible gratitude in my heart. So first to the bus stop today, and then to Seville, where it all began.
Merida Busstation. Now we're at the Merida bus station and there's my bus. I hope the ticket is valid. I really made an effort with the forgery. No, I'm just kidding. So, off we go on the bus, the hairstyle is in place, and the mouse is with us too. This time we stay in a different hostel in Seville, which is also super cheap and well looked after. I followed Edward's recommendation, who we met on the first evening. A tenor for the night in the middle of Seville. You can't complain. Then we explore the city and it's packed full. We call it a day on the roof terrace of our hostel and enjoy another beer to round off the evening. Well, that's it, my friends. The Via de la Plata in December. You can walk it. It's a bit flooded from time to time. It's much greener than in summer, I suppose, and it's an insider tip, and it deserves this insider image. Somehow, there weren't many people around, and it's still worth going here. So if you're doing the Way of St. James in the north in summer and have nothing else planned in winter, why not head south? You can also start from Cadiz or walk the Camino Mozarabe, which also joins here in Merida. See you again at the Camino Bites, Seville next, and then Granada, and then we'll see. And in spring, I'll be traveling with Mike on the Camino Portugues. There'll be another series, so you can look forward to that, and so can I, especially the cutting. LOL. For today, I say skull. And see you soon. Buen Camino. Oh no, wait a minute. There was something else. Almost 10 days have to pass. And I find out that a fellow pilgrim is involved, or not her, but her husband, in the production of the science fiction mega blockbuster Iron Sky. I'm sure you all know it. And her husband was a founding member and even played a part. And I'm completely flabbergasted. Wow, what unexpected journey this has been.